Cleveland Sellers, who's a national program secretary, would have been out of the induction center by now. Uh, he's clearly as smart. Uh, Mr. Sellers brought a suit against the Selective Service and against uh, McNamara, against the governors of South Carolina, their Selective Service systems, and Georgia and their Selective Service systems. Now, we just want to give a little bit of facts, a little bit of facts about that. In the state of Georgia, there are 409 board members in the Selective Service. 28.5% of the state population of Georgia is black. Only 0.2%, that's two tenths percent, of the board members are black on the selective service, which says out of a total membership of 509 board members, they only have five black members. In the state of South Carolina, there are 161 board members. 34.8% of that state is black. 0.6% of the total membership is black. That is to say that of 161 board members in the state of South Carolina, only one member on the Selective Service is black. Now, the Selective Service said in March that 22.4% of the black of people in combat in Vietnam are black people, clearly pointing out that most of the people drafted are black people without fair representation on the Selective Board Services. That itself is not our quarrel. Our quarrel is that within a legal procedure, they will not allow Mr. Sellers to have that case, clearly because they cannot admit that it's not true, that there are no black people <laughs> of any representation on the draft board system selective service around this country. Those people who are out waiting to be picked up by the authorities for refusing to go into the military service. We cannot afford to have black people go into the military services, not only because of the illegal and vicious nature of the war in Vietnam, but because it's a racist war which uses black people to fight against other colored people around the world. It's been the pattern of the United States and its racist foreign policy, and that we can no longer have our young men fight that war. We're then taking a positive approach to, to our resistance. We're going to have black, what's happening, brother? We're going to have a black resistance movement which will speak of the survival of black people in this country. If we are to survive as a people, we cannot allow this country to use us as their cannon fodder. The New York Times reported 35% of the casualties are black people. It's crystal clear that the United States is moving to wipe out the young black youth of this country by sending them to Vietnam. For our survival, we must say, as did Mr. Mohammed Ali, that we cannot go. What is this resistance movement about? Well, we're going to build a black resistance movement where we're going to begin to urge black people to do precisely what the 16 people in SNCC have done, what we have done, and what Mr. Muhammad Ali have done. And they begin to broaden that to show black youth that they have no alternative to going to the war in Vietnam. That we must do as Dr. King has begun to urge now, just refuse to go into the armed forces. On what grounds are you saying that even if the board, the Selective Service Board said were no, it wouldn't make any difference because they're still driving black people out of proportion and certainly black people have no business in the legal system of the legality system the United States claims to have. <laughs> Would you draw up a different constitution? Would I draw up a different constitution? It certainly doesn't allow for the pursuit of happiness. Do you expect to have demonstrations here as you did last time? Yeah, well, Mr. Carmichael is my name. If you call me Sophie one more time, I will not respect you and answer any of your questions. Is that fair? Try it again. Well, you're not saying then that the, the, the main defense is not just the war in Vietnam, but any war. If we weren't there, you think we could be fighting another war for the same purpose? That's correct. The racist foreign policy of the United States allows that it must suppress colored nations around the world who fight for their liberation. The fact that the United States spends 70% of its budget. One dollar? If I take any credit, I take credit for the fact that black people in this day and age will fight back anybody who messes with us. Do you have anything to do with that violence? I will urge black people around this country that if anybody lays their hands on them, they don't have a right to do so, that they fight back those people. Mr. Carmichael, you haven't answered my question. I have answered your question, sir. I have told you what I'm going to do. 
Now, what you want me to say is not the answer to your question. What I would urge black people to fight back. <laughs> what I wanted to know, did you have anything to do with the violence, your speeches? Do you feel that you sparked any of the violence? Well, if I did, they should arrest me. You still haven't answered my question. A man is innocent in this country until proven guilty. Well, I don't even have to testify against, um, I don't even have to testify against myself. So that if somebody's saying that I started violence, they should prove it. It's not for me to debate it, let them prove it. I'm innocent until proven guilty. Yesterday, Dr. King said that he, uh, <laughs> Dan, do you feel, Mr. Carmichael? Well, you have to speak to Dr. King about that. Dr. King, uh, I happened to be at his sermon yesterday, and um, I'm not sure. He said he's still a pacifist, so I'm not sure he's dropping his nonviolence. You think his attitude has changed, in your opinion? Yes, I think that Dr. King has come to realize, as most Americans, that they cannot keep silent during such a vicious war, that they must speak out. There comes a time when every man must speak out, and Dr. King is making it clear that he's speaking out now. He will not speak out 20 years from now at a Nuremberg trial. Uh, have you discussed this uh, theory that you decided that you have about genocide with Dr. King? Well, we have talked about it some, and Dr. King and I are going to have some more meetings next week concerning some strategy <laughs> about that. What is your opinion of his uh, reaction to that? I'm 150% behind it. I think Dr. King's uh, <coughs> statement yesterday as his declaration against the war in Vietnam was an excellent statement. And we should talk about how we're going to go. Does this mean the receive their draft notice? That's right. They've run up to the induction sentence and refused to take the oath. Uh, Mr. Sellers would not be the first to have refused to take the oath. No, Mr. Sellers will not be the first. Uh, how, how, many, how many others have refused? To take About 15 it? others. 15 uh, others. Where's Mr. Schutz? Mr. Schutz has also refused to take the oath. Mr. Carmichael, have any uh, over there? Up to the point. And they all refused to, they refuse to be inducted. And Mr. Sellers will be the 16th who, who has done that. Could you name some others? service system has its own technique for putting out whatever information it wants, or perhaps others do, I don't know. You do not know specifically what they wanted to ask him on the polygraph test? Uh, well, if I did know, I wouldn't comment on it, of course. And uh, I don't know, as a matter of fact. And I don't think they knew either. They just said, will he take a, are you willing to take a polygraph examination? I advise him to, I wouldn't advise him to take a polygraph examination under any circumstances. Nor would I advise anyone else to take one, Ted. What is his legal position now? Well, Mr. Sellers has been involved for uh, a considerable period of time now in a lawsuit pending against the Selective Service System and other defendants, alleging that he should not be inducted by a racially exclusionary Selective Service System. His, he filed suit in the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia. A motion for preliminary injunction to stop the Selective Service process, as far as he was concerned, was denied. Uh, an application for a stay went to the Fifth Circuit, uh, asking for a stay of this procedure today. It was denied. It was denied by the Supreme Court of the United States or by Mr. Justice Black upon op application there. The case, he has a case now pending in the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit, which contests the right of a racially exclusive selective service system to induct him. And secondly, can den uh, alleges that he has been deprived of his right to free expression and free association by the